the literature, you will find there's a basic rule about dealing with temperamentally difficult children. And the rule is, never argue with them. Never get into a power struggle with a three-year-old. Okay? Now, to show you this, to show you this concretely, I have asked uh, one of our participants here, uh, Jill, who's right here. To, Jill's going to come on up. And um, over here, Jill. Your name? Jill. All right. And Jill, uh, when you were a child, um, were you easy or difficult? I was usually easy, but I had a twin, so we had our battles. You had your battles. So there were times when you were difficult. Yes. Okay. Now, Jill is going to play a temperamentally difficult child. I'm her teacher, we're out on the playground, and it's time to come in. And I say to Jill, Jill, everyone's inside, please come in with me right now. I don't want to, I'm gonna come when I'm ready. Jill, now. I won't. Jill, you have to come in, please, come in now. No, I don't want to, I don't uh, have to listen to you. <laughs> now at that point, we have the metaphorical rope. <laughs> and unless I have some alternative strategies, I'm probably going to get into the power struggle. And so we want to do this so you visually see what the power struggle looks like. This is a metaphor, right? So at that point, Jill picks up the rope and I pick up the rope. And I say to Jill, now, Jill. No. You better. I won't. If you don't, you're in big trouble. I'm not coming. I'll come when I'm ready. Jill, I told you to come in right now, and you better come in, Jill. No. <laughs> OK. Oh, you can let go of the rope. Wait, wait. Not finished yet. All right, Jill, you've got a choice. You can either walk into the classroom on your own, or you can hold my hand and we'll walk in together, or if you'd like, you can even skip in. Which, what would you like to do? I want to skip. OK, let's skip in then. <laughs> A little round of applause for it. All right, a couple of things now. Number one, young children born with difficult temperaments love to fight. And why not? You realize children really have nothing to do. Do you understand that? <laughs> I mean, they're not busy. When I'm doing that back and forth, what's going on in my head? I've got my do list is there. I've got a million things are going on that have to be done. She's loving it. Okay. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, we always use a non-power technique with a temperamentally difficult child. We stay away from the power struggle and we move to choice which we call logical consequences. I don't know about you, but anytime someone gives me a choice, I feel like I need to pick one of the two things. I don't know. Like on Saturday mornings, my wife's cleaning the house. I'm reading the newspaper. Does she get angry? No, she doesn't get angry. She says to me, she smiles, comes out to me, she says, what would you like to do? <laughs> Unload the dishwasher or vacuum? And I'm compelled. <laughs> to do one of those things. Do one of them. Does choice work all the time? No, sometimes a child, a smart child says to you, neither. <laughs> oh, then you have to go to your next strategy, okay? But very often the choice will work.